Delilah. You're carrying a baby, all right. It just isn't Shane's baby. Well, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Ooh, that's very convincing, that little display of utter shock. Well rehearsed. In about one minute, I'm sure you'll turn indignant and accusatory. The very idea that this baby could be... Who else's baby would it be? Well, now, I haven't figured that one out yet. Your routine hasn't worked on me, but I'm sure there are any number of guys out there who'd jump at the bait. Doting Dr. Nolan, for one? Doctor... Oh, I have not slept with Dr. Nolan. Oh, right. He's just your doctor. He can't keep his hands off you because he's constantly taking your pulse. For your information, Dr. Nolan happens to be a kind, a considerate gentleman, something that you would know absolutely nothing about. Indignant and accusatory, right on schedule. That is right. I, I find Dr. Nolan... What? Interesting. <laughs> oh, my. And attractive. Oh, my love. You know, as much as I'm enjoying this, you can stop your little tap dance routine. I'm wise to you now. The idea that this baby could be Dr. Nolan's or anybody's, but Shane is absolutely rude and, and, and insulting. I thought it was rather ingenious. You are. It's a joke. Why, why would I sleep with anybody but Shane? He's the only man I ever loved. I could think of a number of reasons, Lila. But since you find my ideas so comical, I think perhaps I'll share them with someone else. Someone who could use a good laugh. Michael. Vicki McKinnon. I've put up with your garbage for Victoria's sake, but no more. No lying hypocrite is gonna get away with insulting my son's mother. Grant. That's great, Grant. Now you're gonna... Teach me how to treat a woman. No, no, nobody can teach you anything, can they, Jake? You're the perfect gentleman, aren't you, Jake? Yeah. You got a lot of nerve attacking Victoria for any reason, considering your own lack of morals is only surpassed by your lack of intelligence. All right, now listen, that is enough. Let him finish, Vicky. Let him finish. So what are you saying? You're saying something about my intelligence? The only. And I mean the only positive aspect of your pathetic personality was your loyalty to Victoria. But along comes one little bump in the road and you can't handle it, no, can no, no, you? No, no, I don't knock it off, knock it need off. you, knock it off. Vicky. Why don't you just let him finish? You're having the time of your life, aren't you, Jake? Making moral judgments on this lady? Well, if you're without sin, why don't you just join a monastery and leave her alone? That's what I'm calling to find out. Why haven't you called? There's nothing to report. You know, I don't like you making up the rules as you go along. Yeah, what else don't you like? Your attitude? Or the fact that Amanda Corey's taken such an interest in you? I can handle her. Yeah, you can handle her. Just like you handled her following you, huh? Or finding your gun. It won't happen again. You're right, it's not gonna happen again. Not if I pull the plug, which I'm about ready to do. Well, don't. Why not? Huh? Every day you are in that house, it is a risk. You give me one good reason why I shouldn't. I'm not going back to where I was. If you can't take the heat, that's your problem. You still haven't given me one good reason why I shouldn't pull you out of there. Cameron! Hello? Something's going down here. I'm gonna need more time to find out what it is. You bring me something soon, something we can use. Otherwise, this whole operation is off. You got that? Loud and clear. Good. Check in with me tomorrow, whether you like it or not.
upset by what I said before about Carl. I want to know more about the gun in Cameron's room. It isn't just a gun, it's a high-powered rifle. There is something else I didn't get a chance to tell you before. What? I told Cameron that I was going to be bringing Allie home for summer vacation. And he said that I shouldn't. Did he say why? He tried to take it back. He didn't want to admit that there is danger in this house. Mom, something is going on here. There is a reason that Carl hired Cameron. I asked her. About Cameron? That and the gun. What did he say? Amanda, we're going away. The babies and Carl and me. Going on vacation now. No, not vacation. We're moving away from Bay City as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm not going to let you talk to him like that. Somebody's got to knock this pompous ass Look, off his soapbox. Been through hell. You just let him finish, Vicky. That's right. You don't need any help, do you, Jake? You've got this part down to a T, don't you? Flawless, blameless, long-suffering he hero. he is blameless. What? Am I the only one who remembers what happened that night when he was up on that hill prowling around looking for he you? He had every right to be up there. Oh, yeah? Did he have a right to lie to the authorities when they asked whether anyone else was on that hill? Because that's what he did, you know. He lied. He lied for spite and for revenge. And two men are dead. And I'd say it's a miracle you weren't killed yourself. All right, that's enough. That's how, enough. How the hell you do it, Jake? Huh? I mean, how do you manage to turn yourself into such a nice guy? My little boy in there is missing his grandfather so much. And when it comes right down to it, who really killed Michael? Grant, get out of here right now! I will not ask you again. Get out. I'm not going to have you talking to him like I'm that. Gone. I'm gone. You're real good at dishing out home, home remedies, but you're not very good at taking them, are you? I think he has taken quite enough from you tonight. Now, I'll tell Kirkman that you said good night. You know what your problem is, Victoria? You align yourself with men who want to change your basic instincts. You have absolutely no idea how wonderful she... Good night. Well, we all learned a lesson here tonight, didn't we? Maybe I shouldn't show up uh, unannounced. You, uh, you tell Kirk and I said happy birthday. you sharing your ridiculous ideas all across town. I saw the look in your eyes at the mere mention of Vicky's name. Of course you did. I can't stand the woman. Because Shane put her in charge of his estate. She turned all that over to Shane's heir, didn't she? And she'd take it all back if she found out that the baby you were carrying isn't Shane's baby. Legally, the agreement would be null and void. You wouldn't get a damn. And that's what this is all about, isn't it, honey? Getting your hot little hands on cold, hard cash. Shane's baby has a right to his inheritance. Absolutely, but it only has a right to Shane's estate if it's Shane's baby. It is Shane's baby. I wonder if a blood test would bear that out. I doubt if a lie detector test would. Why are you so concerned about all this anyway? I take a personal interest in all my clients, honey. The only personal interest you have taken in me is to make my life miserable. Where the hell have you been? I, I thought you were just going to call Rachel talk. and then... There was another... Ember's incident. I have to go. Lila, I'm afraid we have to put this pleasant little chat on hold. How sad. Well, don't despair. We'll pick up right where we left off. I have nothing else to say to you on this subject or any other. You're playing with fire, honey. Borrowing money from loan sharks and expecting to pay it back with money you may never see? You just take care of your own life. I'll be fine. You just be careful. Somebody else, some other way to get money. 
Somebody that owes me. Yeah, well, you're a genius. You made yourself a trip. It's Lila. We need to talk. Well, give it to me straight. There's a poem, chapter six. Please. I thought the ad was for chapter six. Oh, what difference does it make? What chapter? It's what I saw Carl doing today. You got the poem? It was meant for you? I got the poem. Oh, so it's serious now, isn't it? Now that it's happened to you. Oh, be quiet. Did you call Rachel? Oh, no. What? We have to get over there. Right away. You know what? It's time that we got some answers. Come on. Come on. How can you move away? This is your home. My home is with Carl. And living here has become too much for him. Because of me? Yes, undoubtedly, because of you and your brother. That's how it started. But now it's about Mac. It's all about Mac. And it's eating him up. You think that Carl has a problem with living in Daddy's house? I don't know what Carl's problem is, but living here is contributing. Yes, I'm sure of that. Mom, I told you that I thought Carl was losing it. And now you're going away with him? He said he'd see a doctor. What, is that a deal that he made with you? Leaving was my idea. Mom, how this could is you... what's best for him. And that's what I'm going to do. I see you've told Amanda the news. Yes. And we're not taking it well. I'm a bit shocked. Well, give it time. You'll see. It's best for all concerned. Sure, I'll go. I didn't hear anything. I won't stop you, Amanda. From what? Trying to change your mother's mind. But before you expend any energy, let me just say this to you. We are leaving. Why are you doing this? Rachel. Rachel wants to go. Rachel wants whatever you want. What is it? What are you really up to? I'm not up to anything. But if I were, I assure you, you would be the very last person to know. Do let's have a pleasant evening, Amanda. Miss Corey? What? What's wrong? I'm not exactly sure. What do you mean? Something is happening or going to happen. I don't even know what it is. Slow down. Talk to me. What's the matter? You have probably known about this for days. Knew what? You can tell me. Carl is taking my mother and the twins away. Where are they going and when? Don't act like you don't know anything about this. Wait a minute. Cameron, Cameron, please. If you know anything, anything at all about what Carl is planning, will you please tell me now? I'm sorry. I gotta go. Cameron! I can't, I can't stick around. Why not? Because I got, I got things I got to take care of. You know, I have stuff to do. What I wanted to do is I wanted to come by and I wanted to wish you a happy birthday and give you all your presents. The best present would be if you stayed. We could be a family again, G. Like when we were all married. Right, but you know... things have changed. This is the worst birthday ever. Yeah, what are you talking about? Come on, you got tons of presents. Not what I wanted most. What did you want most? For you to read me a story and tuck me in. Like you used to. Well, you're pulling out all the big guns, aren't you? Okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. You listen to me. You listen to me. You go upstairs, get your PJs on, right this minute, and I'll be there as soon as you get done. Go, go. Okay, let's stay right there. I'm gonna stay right here. Let's get the rest of Thank you. Thank you, that means so much to me. It was Kirk's birthday. What Graham said before, he was wrong. All of it, he was just wrong. And 
I just wanted to thank you. One story, Vicky. One story. And I'm gone. And I still want that divorce. Well, we're not divorced yet, are we? has taken Rachel and their kids. They're leaving town. For good? Well, it ain't a vacation. And you didn't even see this coming? He didn't say a word to me or to anybody else. <sighs> Maybe he's on to you. No. I made it clear to him that I'd do anything for him, illegal or otherwise. And he never mentioned leaving? No, it's the first I heard about it. It's from Amanda. <sighs> I don't know what to make of this. Bureau's got proof that somebody in town hired a hitman. It doesn't mean that it's Carl. Come on, with this guy's history, the way he's been acting lately, shifting money around and now he's skipping town, it's got to be him. No, you don't even have any proof. I'll get you proof. You haven't got any squat yet. We don't even know the name of the hitman, and either you have nothing to link Carl to this. I'm working on it. You're working on it. You're working on it. Well, you know what? You're not doing a very good job. Maybe I should just pull you out of that house. Absolutely not. I'm not leaving there now. If I decide that you're out of that house, you are out of that house. Lose the power trip for me, okay? Somebody's got to stay close to Hutchins. Because someone's on his list, and that someone could be killed. You've got nothing to prove it. I see what's going on there in that house. From the wife and her friends, they all know that something's not right about Hutchins. That puts them all at risk. Somebody's got to be there to protect them. You're getting awfully worked up about this. I take my work seriously, that's all. Uh-huh. This is getting personal. I know the signs. Something or someone in that house is getting to you. What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Cameron, give it up. Someone is getting under your skin, and I want to know who it is. Claudia let us in. You know, we really must speak to Claudia. We need to talk to you, Carl. About what? Well, this poem. A poem. It was in Embers in the Snow. Felicia found it attached to her door this evening. It was held in place by this small decorative sword. Well, it's all very interesting. Felicia. Are you still trying to connect me with this rubbish? I saw you put it in the drawer earlier this evening. That was before you said I was poisoning Rachel's mind and that I was plotting with Matthew and Amanda. You do remember all of that, don't you? Yes, well, not quite that version of events. Well, you know, to find this poem stuck to my door was a little unnerving. Using exactly the same phrase. That. Yes, that would give you pause. And the fact that on that desk was a copy of my book, Embers. And the stereo was playing Green Slaves? But what are you suggesting? That I sat down and copied out the poem? I don't really know what you were doing, Carl. Someone stabbed this poem into her door. When? No, no, no let's, let's get this straight. Felicia, you are insisting, are you, that I had, that I have been behind these Embers incidents. And that now, I've stuck this second-rate poem in your front door. Is that right? I don't know what's happening to you, Carl. I really don't. Look, skip, is. skip the preamble, Felicia. Here, skip it. I mean, do you believe that I stuck that poem in your front door, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Why? You're right. I am obsessed with something in that house. What? My job, from which I understand, is to protect anyone that Hutchins might consider an enemy. And with him, that could mean anybody. But he hasn't even made a threat. 
Yeah, but he's made it clear that he doesn't like Amanda or her brother. And now that Amanda's bringing her only child home? Well, 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 who would have thought? Huh. Thought what? Big stud like you getting all worked up about protecting the quarry? What's your problem? You came down on me for being careless, and now you're giving me grief for caring? I'm just trying to figure you out, Cameron. I mean, a guy like you doesn't strike me as someone whose heart would melt over a couple little babies. No, there's got to be something more. There's got to be something in it for you. Believe me, there is nothing in that house that I want. No, but maybe someone. Amanda. That's it, isn't it? You gotta be kidding me. That princess? Yeah. Yeah, who would want something that's so attractive and available? Yeah. Like the heiress is ever available to the driver. Hey, stuff happens. Not to me. Because I know it's off limits. Good. Because if Amanda Corey gets close to you and finds out what you're up to, then this whole thing is over with. She won't, so don't sweat it. Now I gotta be getting back. I'll call you if anything changes. Well, I, I have to admit, I, I have no idea why you would be doing this. I mean, why would I waste my precious time stalking either one of you? It's preposterous. And as to the notion of sticking that maudlin poem in your front door, that's quite ludicrous. Then you're denying any involvement? Of course I am. Unequivocally. I know. I've done everything I can to be of assistance, but now I really would prefer it if you'd take this, this silly little problem and take it to the police. We're talking about a threat to my life. I don't consider that silly or little. Yes. And if you're behind it... You just said he wasn't. Are you saying he's lying? Of course he is. He's a lawyer. They never come right out with it, do they? I didn't come here to be insulted. What did you expect, Kat? I came here for answers. He just gave them to you. If you don't believe them, that's your problem. Rachel, why on earth, what possible motive could he have for tormenting you and Cass? All right. You know what I think? What? I think it has something to do with Mac. Mac? Mac? How on earth can any of this be concerned with a man who's been dead for years? Felicia and I were Mac's friends, his good friends. Now, it's possible you resent that. Why? All of a sudden? Why all of a sudden did Carl make massive changes at, in the power structure at Corey? And what are you implying? That I did something illegal at Corey Publishing? Or is this just your way to let my wife know what a poor substitute I am no, for the great Mac Corey. Maybe that is what you're afraid of. Maybe you're afraid that we'll convince Rachel that you That's are the man really she married. My God, Rachel. I'm sorry. I, maybe, maybe that came out wrong. Yeah. What came out was what you really think for the first time. Rachel, can we please discuss this calmly as friends? I don't want friends? to discuss my husband with you. I've already told you that. We only want you to be happy, don't I you I am know? happy. I've told you that again and again, and you won't accept it. But you have concerns. You told me that. Oh, something you keep reminding me. In a moment of weakness. That was a mistake, and I will never make it again. What are you saying? That you don't want my opinion? You it's don't not an issue because you? we're leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? That's right, we're leaving. We're moving out of Bay City. Rachel. For good? Please, don't, yes. don't do this. Please. Please. Uh, don't leave everyone. Don't, don't go with him. I don't know what he's capable of doing and, and leaving I all of us here with my life, Felicia. I won't hear anything more against him. You can't stop me from speaking my mind, Rachel. I can stop you from speaking it here in my house. From now on, you're no longer welcome in this house. I know what What do you think about that? Look better? Times, especially when we work together. <laughs> hey, what happened in our game? Boy, what's this? Our mailbox. It's our house. You made this? <laughs> it's terrific. It was supposed to be a surprise for Mother's Day. <gasps> I'm sorry. I I really didn't mean to ruin your surprise. I just think it's so cool. He helped a little bit too. Thank him. 
Thank you. Val Kirk did most of the work himself. Well, you guys make a great team. You know what? Looks like the paint's a little bit wet. Should I put it out on the porch to dry and you guys can talk about your next project? Kirkland, did you, uh... Did you, uh... Brush your teeth? Yeah. You did? Well, guess what? You're gonna do go do it again. Go. Go. As soon as you get back, we'll read the story. Thanks for the mailbox. I had no idea. What do you think you're talking about in the next project? I just thought it would be nice for Kirkland. To... Don't, don't use the kids, Vicky. What? I mean, if you, if you think you're going to do this to, to, to stick us together so some way we'll drift back and, and spend time like it was, you could just forget about it. I know your opinion of me has sunk pretty low, but I would never use Kirkland, not ever. All right, maybe that was a, a cheap shot. Thank you. But you're the one that said you wouldn't, you wouldn't stop at anything, you know? Yes, I did. So I'm just warning you, whatever plot you think you've got going, just drop it because it's not going to work. If you know me as well as you say you do... Which I do. ...then you should know that I'm happy... <sighs> I'm so happy that my son is enjoying his birthday, finally. It just makes me happy to see him happy. Oh, you're if you happy, have a problem happy, with happy. that, I'll then you can what, just you're deal so with happy. it. You can just be happy all you want, I'm just telling you. I'm gonna read Kirkland the bedtime story, and then, and then I'm leaving. You've said it enough. Yeah. Just wanna make sure you got the message. Nothing has changed for us, it's still over. Alright, what story is it gonna be? Yeah. Hmm, let's see. The Prince on the Hill. Alright. <laughs> I think I haven't read this one 6,000 times. <laughs> okay. Once upon a time, on a far away hill lived a perfect little boy in a perfect little house with a perfect little family. How wonderful she I don't care what you say, Jake. It's not over. You still love me. It's not even close to over. What on earth are you doing here? I've come here to help you finish what you started, Lila. How did you get in here? Oh, that. That, that was the easy part. Here, make half your dad. Don't you know you're not supposed to smoke in the same room as a pregnant woman? That's a very expensive Cuban cigar. You know what? I don't care. You want Grant? Two things, actually. <clears throat> number one, I got your phone call, which leads me to number two, a brilliant idea. I don't care about number two. Now, about my call... You need money. That is what you want, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I think you owe me, Grant. Especially since I dropped my civil suit on your insistence against say, Jake and listen, Vicky. Listen, and listen, if I hadn't done that, perhaps that maybe pitch, I... I'm sure that we can work something out. We can? Yes. Yes. We have important things to talk about. Oh, right. Like your brilliant idea. Lila, I know how much that you wanted to bring that civil suit against Victoria. That's right. That woman destroyed my life. She stole my husband, and she's responsible for Please, his death. Please, don't start. She... Believe me, I've heard it all. I figured out a way for you to exact your revenge. <laughs> Grant. Don't you read the newspaper? watch TV or listen to the radio, I already got my revenge on Miss Vicky. The day that Jake left, the rest is history, like their marriage. I'm afraid that's wishful and premature thinking, Lana. Oh, no. Jake is so miffed at her. <laughs> He's never going to go back to that woman as long as he lives. He's there now. What? 
I just came from the cottage. He's there now. With Victoria and Kirkland, Norman Rockwell couldn't paint a more perfect picture. There has to be a reason that he's there. Oh, there's a perfectly good reason. That would be Kirkland's birthday. Oh. Well, there you go. That doesn't mean that they're getting along. Oh, sure. There's a little tension in the air. There's some things to work out. But that's the fun part for some people. That's where you're wrong. No, that's where you're wrong, Lila. Because once again, you had a really good idea, and you just screwed it up. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I know what I saw, Lila. In my estimation, Jake and Victoria will be back together within a week. And you're broke. And you're pregnant. And once again, Victoria is going to have it all. No, Rachel, please. You have to listen to me. Uh, Rachel has listened to you. Now, perhaps you should listen to her. Leave. No, I won't. It's leave. no use, honey. Let's get out of here. After all these years, we've been friends. You're going to say goodbye like this? Goodbye. Come on. What's all that about? Cass and Felicia are no longer welcome in this house. What? Why? Well, they made several nasty accusations aimed at me, of course. About what? Oh, what difference does it make, Amanda? So you threw them out? We had no choice. Mom, they're your oldest friends. I know how it difficult that was for you. But it meant a great deal to me. Well, I always stand by you. Don't you understand that? I do more and more. Can I get you something? I need some fresh air. Excuse me. Miss Dodgson. Yes, Cameron, what is it? I heard you decided to move out. Word does travel fast, doesn't it? Is there anything I can do and give you a hand? Not for the moment. Why don't you take the rest of the evening off, Cameron? Are you sure? Because if you need anything... But I don't. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Miss Corey. Any chance that you'll change your mind? No. None. Why don't you organize a party? A party? Yes, a going away party. Just family and close friends, excluding Cass and Felicia, of course. I can't imagine Mom ever cutting the ties with them. No. They must have really upset her. They tried to turn her against me. You see, they don't understand what we mean to each other. Would you like to share a bottle of wine, a good no. one? No. Thank no? you. Well, I want a good bottle of wine. If you'll excuse me, I'm on my way down to the cellar. I shall find one that doesn't travel well. You cocky son. 
I'm gonna find out what you're up to. And I know just how. Your love saved me, Mac. And I'm determined to save Carl. Something's wrong. And he can't tell me what it is, but I feel as though I'm losing him. And I can't let that happen. So I'm taking him away with the babies. Just us. Because everyone, instead of supporting him, they're turning against him. They want me to choose. And the choice is so easy. I choose Carl. It won't be easy to say goodbye to the children, Matthew and Amanda. But they've brought all of this on us. And they'll have to live with it. Just as you taught us. We live with our mistakes. You taught us so many things. And in order for love to be true, it must be unconditional. And I do love Carl. Beyond reason. Certainly that love will heal whatever's wrong with him. But I can't give up on him. Any more than you gave up on me.